started my business up about three years ago now, so it's been going really well. It's the busiest it's ever been now. I just love coming in and just sitting at the wheel and, and making stuff. You know, I just come in, make a load of balls of clay, sit at the potter's wheel, and I just drift away. And I just thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy that process. You know, just you can be proud of the work that you've done. And then especially when a customer comes along and buys your pot and they send you a photo and say, this is my favorite mug, I love using it all the time. It's such a good feeling. So my name is Josh Linus, uh, I run my own business called Mud Ireland. It really started, I always knew I wanted to be creative, so I went to our college to study a foundation degree in art and design, but I found out very quickly that I hated computers. <laughs> I wanted to do something with my hands. So when I got down to the ceramics department, it just clicked like that there and I just fell in love with it. So I transferred to doing the ceramics degree and I went and studied a, an apprenticeship in a local pottery. That's where I sort of learned the skill of making a pot. I worked up in uh, Crawfordsburn for a wee bit for another pottery and then I started my own business. More or less, our business is made in two sections. So I do pottery lessons. Uh, where I bring people in and I teach them all the way from total, total beginners to more advanced sort of master class. You know, if I had never done an apprenticeship myself, I never would have had been able to learn the skill. So it's something that's really important to us actually is teaching people. So that's sort of 50% of the business. And then the other side of the business is just making stuff. And seeing as you're in, I'm gonna show you how to make a wee mug. And the first thing for me to do is to knead up the clay to make sure that it's all mixed with itself and that there's no air bubbles. You'll see some clay here, which is totally white dry, but say there's a crack or something forms, smash that all up, soak it back down and knead it again on the plaster. So that's the great thing about the plaster. So we do our wee wedging and this is called monkey's face wedging because if we knead it like this here, it looks like a wee monkey's face. <laughs> and then we're gonna squish poor monkey and do a cube. Because when it's in a cube like that there, it's easy to portion out. And when you're trying to make pots all the same, it's important to weigh out a specific weight of clay. If you want to end up with a round pot, you want to start off with a round ball. Now with a couple of balls, we'll go to the wheel and throw some mugs. different places in the world have different seams of clay. So in Ireland, particularly, you have lots of red clays. Okay, the likes of the Lagan Valley there is one of the biggest seams of red clay in the UK. So that's why you had the likes of the Belfast Brickworks. And that's one of the industries that Belfast is actually the most famous for. But that was a huge sort of thing in ceramics in Ireland. In terms of actually making pots, we have Bally, our Bleak pottery. And over in the west coast of Ireland there, there's we seam of clay and then all of the actual potters in Ireland, a lot of them will get their clay from across the water. You'll know the, uh, all the industrial potteries over in Stoke. That's where the biggest seam of throwing clay comes from in the UK. So now most of our clay would be imported from over the water. Now we're onto the potter's wheel. And this is my favorite bit of the whole process. And um, I've sort of customized my wheel a wee bit to have these nice bats that sort of sit down onto it. So I slot that down into place. And that means I can take wee tiles and make my pots on top of the tile. Then, and because the pot is wet, really the clay is soaking wet, it's like ice cream. So if I tried to lift it off, I could distort it. So I like to let it dry out on this a wee bit and then lift it off later. So the first thing I have to do is to get the wheel head all cleaned off. So I take my sponge to wet it down and then I use my kidney tool to scrape off yesterday's milk. And then I'm gonna clean the pot up a wee bit or clean the tile up. Now it's all clean, I can take my mug or take my ball of clay and throw it down. And that's where the term throwing actually comes from. Now I'm gonna take my hands and press them down onto the top of the clay to make sure that the clay is well stuck on. Once it's down and I know it's stuck, then I can squeeze it back up again. So I'm gonna squeeze my hands together. And what I'm looking for as a traffic cone kind of shape. 
And this bit's quite important, similar to our wedging at the start, to make sure the clay is nice and even with itself and also to get it totally centered. Okay, so now I'm gonna take the clay back down and I take my left hand here, I call this the emotional support hand because it's gonna give the clay a wee bit of support. My fist then is gonna come down on top of the clay and press the clay downwards till I get this sort of shape here. And that's ready for me now to work on. So I take two fingers in each hand and I'm gonna drill a hole into the center. Being careful not to go right down the way through to the tile, otherwise I'll have no bottom in my mug. Then I'm gonna hook my fingers and slowly stretch the clay out. And as I said earlier, I like that signature style of those throwing rings, those spirals. So I'm gonna add a wee bit of pizzazz here at this point, just to fix that up. And now this is the most delicate part of the whole process, the actual lifting of the walls. And essentially what happens here, I'm gonna squeeze the clay between my fingers and draw them up. And that should in turn draw the clay upwards. So I press my fingers down at the bottom and slowly pull up. So I have to be quite firm down in the base, squeeze my fingertips quite hard together and slowly, patiently lift the walls up. Everything about pottery's gotta be patient and gentle and slow. One more time, I'm gonna squeeze firmly in the bottom. And the, as I come up the wall, the wall gets thinner. So I'm releasing the pressure. And because I've made so many mugs now, my sort of hands know the measurements. I know that's about the right size for a mug. So I just have to straighten this up then. All that's left to do is to clean out any water that's left inside with my sponge and trim the base. And to do that, I use my screechy tool of death. <laughs> and that just gives me a nice tidy base, means I don't have to worry about that tomorrow. Then, because I made my pot on the tile, I can just pop it off. And then I'm gonna take it over and set it aside really to try until it's ready for a handle. To take your piece of clay, it has to go through many steps of hand making. And so you take your ball of clay, you throw it on the potter's wheel, you create your pot. And that's sort of the stage everyone sees and go, wow, that's the pot done. And it was made like that there in about 90 seconds flat. But it's actually a process that takes four weeks. So the pot will go through my hands another 17 times before it actually comes out as a finished piece. So you have handling to do. You have fettling, where you'll take off any wee rough marks. You'll clean the pot. You have to say it was a teapot or anything like that there. You have to add wee knobs and lids and spouts and whatnot on. And then it goes into the kiln and it goes in for a, what we call its biscuit firing. And when it comes out, it's like a biscuit. And when it comes out, it's porous. So it'll soak up water like a biscuit. So that means we can then dip the pot into a bucket of glaze, give it a wee swirl around. And then when we lift it out, it'll be coated in a glaze. So when you put it back in the kiln, that melts that glass powder, that glaze, and, and forms a glaze on the pot. For us, most of our stuff is round. <laughs> so that would be one of our big limitations, you know, that the wheels spinning makes round stuff. There's all kinds of different pottery, different kinds of making. You can sculpt, you can slab build. But outside of that, it's a really limitless medium. You know, the only limit is your imagination and what you think you can make. Now we're gonna make some handles. Um, and again, it just starts off with a wee ball of clay like this, this might make six or seven handles. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my ball of clay, slap it around a wee bit, and I'm gonna roll it into the shape of a wee carrot. Something like that, okay? Then I dip it in the water. And this is a traditional method of pulling handles, or making a handle, which is called pulling. So essentially what you do, you squeeze at the top, and you slide your hands down. This is a Chinese method of creating a handle. We are gonna do snake eyes like this. And that creates just a lovely form of handle. And then I like to bevel the edges just a little bit. So I draw my finger along on each side. Again, I'll snip off the end a wee bit. And then I have my measurement here on my board of how long it should be. Then that can't handle can just sit there for usually about half an hour, so it becomes like this. 
wee bit dried out and I can peel it up and I can form it. So I'm gonna lay it down and bend it over into a nice sprung handle. Okay, keeping that nice vibrant curve and it should be almost the shape of a wee ear and that's the most comfortable shape to hold. So now my mug is all dried out for, well these were made yesterday, so it's dried out for about 24 hours under a wee plastic cover and to just dry them out gently. And now it's what we call leather hard. Okay, so it's hard enough that I can handle the pot without destroying it. The handles have been drying out this afternoon because they're smaller, they dry a wee bit quicker. And once they're the same consistency, then I can attach them without fear of the cracking. And to attach them, I'm gonna use a little bit of what I call slip. Okay, and this is just a clay mixed up with water. And it acts as a glue on the pot. So I'm gonna dab a wee bit on at the top and a wee bit of it on at the bottom. And it's best to be generous with your slip. I'm going to take my handle, put one pot hand inside the pot, and the preformed handle I can just press onto the rim here. I press it on at the top, and then I press it on at the bottom. And just a little bit of time and a little bit of pressure to make sure it's well stuck, and then I can do my smooshing, which is just taking the finger and smoothing it on. And then, final step of this handle, I'm gonna then place on our stump, just to so let people know this pot was made in Mud Ireland. And then that's all good to go. In the old times, you would have just dug your clay up out of the ground and made pots with whatever was underneath your house. It's a really common material, but in terms of finding the right clay, it can be quite rare. You know, you need clay with very specific properties. It has to be what we call plastic, which to the layman, would, you would think, oh, that means it's really stiff, but actually that means that it stretches. Uh, so you can, you can work with it and stretch it without it cracking and, and tearing and things like that. We started off with porcelain. Some people will call China clay. It's the only place in the world where you get pure white porcelain and that's because they have very, very pure soil there. And that's actually where we import our porcelain from because we like to use the pure stuff, you know, the good stuff. But we're just sort of gradually working our way up. We're now in the Millennium Court here in Portadown, but originally it started in my parents' garage. But it was all I needed to make some pots. And then all my friends and family, you know, went on and I did a, a deal if you put £50 in towards this, you got a free pottery lesson. So that was what helped me at the, at the very beginning grow. And a lot of those guys helped me in that first week Kickstarter are still some of my best customers today where they keep coming back and back from where, where mud. Next step of the process, once the pot has been fired in the kiln, as we talked about, to bring it up to biscuit ware, then we're able to glaze the pot. Okay, so I'm gonna glaze this one in our Belfast blue style. Before I do that, the first thing I have to do is to prepare my glaze. And then I'm just gonna get my hand in there. I'm gonna stir this glaze all up. And what I'm trying to do is squeeze out any wee lumps that might be inside of the pot. The way I'm going to do this, I'm going to scoop up a bit of glaze in my jug, and this is quite a delicate part of the whole thing, and pour in some glaze right up to the rim, very quickly out, give it a wee shake, and straight back into the glaze, and you'll see this dries in extremely quickly because that clay is at that biscuit wear stage. I kind of like to leave all these natural marks. So these are what you call the throwing rings. My sort of signature style is just leaving those throwing rings and let them do the decoration. And I formulate my glazes specifically so that they pull and they flow in and they accentuate that form. And I like to go for that translucent color or translucent glaze. And to add the color is all different kinds of metal oxides. A couple of the common ones are copper. This is a copper oxide here. And it's actually our Belfast blue collection. <laughs> It's inspired by the Belfast roofs and it's the same chemical reaction that happens to create that colour in the Belfast roofs, that copper oxidising that creates the same colour in our glaze. Now that we've got our pot glazed and the glaze is soaked in and dried in, the next step then is to fire the pot, which will take it from this to this. Okay, and it goes right up to about 1300 degrees Celsius 
in the kiln room. And actually while we're passing it, I'm gonna talk a wee bit about this. So you can see this, people always catches people's eye when they come in the studio. And I talked earlier about the, the vast range of possibilities you can have in ceramics. We do loads of bespoke orders for restaurants, for all kinds of things, where you can pick from lots of different clays and lots of different colors. So you can get super creative with your ceramics and that's one of the things I really like about it is a wee bit of playtime, always working on new designs, new things, and that keeps it exciting for me. Techniques that really haven't changed much in the time that we've been making pots. One of the simplest is rolling out coils of clay and forming it, kind of like the first CNC machine or the first day, uh, 3D printer, you would build a coil and you build your pot up in layers until you get it up to height. But all the stuff we make, I like to use just the traditional handmade technique of throwing on the potter's wheel. And that way you get that nice variation. It's kind of like when you're a potter, it's you're always aiming for perfection. The best pot's always your next one. <laughs> but as soon as you think, oh, I'm not gonna get any better, then you're done. And so you're always chasing perfection, but kind of knowing that you'll never ever get there. And at the same time, that's the nice thing about it. This is the kiln, okay? And this is made up with a special brick that is really, really thermally efficient. And inside of it, it's more or less like a gigantic toaster. Okay, there's some elements in there that cause the heating. So I open it up. Okay. And inside you can see I have wee props and shelves that I can place the pots on. Okay, so I just sort of stack them in like so. Well, this one's fired so it wouldn't go in, but this one here will go in and I would fill this kiln up with probably about 80 mugs would fit inside this boy. Okay, we do have the smaller kiln as well, which we can do smaller orders on. Um, up here, we have all the different props. Again, they're made out of the same material as the bricks so they can withstand that massive heat. We use these things called cones. And essentially all this is, is like liquid or like solid glaze. And when it reaches a certain temperature, it starts to bend over. Okay, so this one, which has just started to bend, I know it was got to the right temperature. This one here, which we would say is well over, has gone way past temperature. So you always put a couple of those in, one at the top, one at the bottom, to make sure your, your pots are coming out at the right temperature. And that helps with quality control and diagnosing if there's gonna be any issues with the kiln. So now we're just unloading our kiln, uh, which has, um, has fired all the way up to about 1300 degrees Celsius. So it's been really hot, but now it's cool enough uh, for a touch. And oftentimes I'll try and sneak the kiln open as quickly as I can to uh, see all the goodness inside. All right guys, so that's it. That's your 101 in making a mug. I hope you've really enjoyed this video. Um, if you wouldn't mind, head on over to our website, check out all our classes and stuff that we have available with some really good experiences and some lovely pots too. And make sure you uh, subscribe to the channel here and to get more amazing content. And as well, if you need any more information, you can check out the Conley Cove website. But anyway, thanks again. You've been great.